This game just looks great. What the? Hey, kid! Watch where you're going! Hey, screw you! Your wrench nearly cracked my head open! Oh, no! It's not damaged, is it? That's my lucky wrench. Yeah, lucky it didn't kill me. When's this upgrade gonna be finished anyway? Look, kid, I just go where they tell me. Every night, another power surge. Every morning, another part of the grid fry. And I'm out here fixing it. Do I get any thanks? No. What's causing all the outages? At the moment, a little red-headed girl. Now throw me my wrench, kid. Be a shit. Looks like I have all the leverage. So tell me, what exactly is taking so long with these repairs? Apart from shoddy workmanship, that is. Hey, we're busting our butts to keep your lights on. These lines should be lasting for decades, but they're burning out after just a few weeks. It's the strangest thing. Anyway, toss me my wrench. But be careful. It's a family heirloom. Dropped on my father. It'll drop on me. But what could possibly be using that much power? You're killing me, little girl. Arthurton's a tiny town. The mines are practically shut down. So what could it be? Surely someone must know. All I know is I got three more jobs today, and I can't finish any of them without my wrench. So, will you please just give it back already? Fine. I've got bigger fish to fry. Thanks, kid. Where are you? Oh, very easy to find. As Jenny stepped out of the dark forest, she saw warm sunlight reflecting off the cool lake. And next to that, something even cooler. <laughs> Keith Stroudsbury. <laughs> Not so much grinding. <laughs> oh, Keith, what are you doing? Not everyone saw it, but to Jenny, there was something special about Keith. He's just happy being himself. Nothing seemed to bother him. Not even having to dance in a costume for a dollar an hour. But Jenny was not so laid back. Not when it comes to standing up for a friend. Especially her only friend. Jenny is a lonely sack of shit. Yeah, get that synth in there. Restore key I think there's been enough dancing for one day, don't you? That's not gonna help. Hey, Jenny. Hello. Susan. Actually, I prefer Susie. Busy laughing while others earn a living, Susan? Not everyone's got your dad's money, I guess. Jenny! Tall and handsome, with intense, mysterious eyes. And the cool longest should have neck. been his middle name, instead of Tarquin. But Keith was so cool, he didn't even mind. Give me one minute. I'm just finishing my... Sure. Don't let me interrupt your work. My shift ends... In 15 minutes, I know. I'm early. I'm meeting a client over at the dock. Paid case. Could be big. Real big. Couldn't be as big as her head. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really... Impressive? Maybe. All I care about is keeping this town crime-free. <laughs> the only crime here is that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Back in a minute, Keith. I'll have the usual. Straight up and hot. Nothing fancy. You got it. Hang on. Is that, that, okay, I think that's just the marker for this is Keith. No. 
How about now? Move it to the left a bit. What's he doing up there? Not now, kid. We're busy. Any better? No, keep going. Now? Yes, it's working. Hold it right there. That's what all the fuss is about. Not this guy again. What is that? Whatever it is, it's not my music. Maybe it's jazz? Shh, I'm trying to listen. You shush. I'm the DJ. I'm in charge. When's this party getting started, boys? Oh, uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, how are we supposed to dance to this? I think we're losing them. Another station must be interfering with the signal. It's all on guard, they don't get it. Stations in Arthurton. Wait, all these wires must be acting as a giant antenna. Jenny listened closely to the mysterious transmission. It was like no other radio broadcast she'd heard before. Hold it steady! Sorry, I'm trying! That's just getting worse. You might as well come down. No, wait! I can almost make out what they're saying. But just like that, the sound faded away. What did you do? That's no use. Come on. We gotta get this equipment back to the AV department by six. Jenny was so lost in contemplation, she'd almost forgotten the case at hand. My client. I'm supposed to meet her at the dock. Danger. No swimming. Sounds safe. I'll just go straight to drowning, why not? You can't tell me what to do! Oh. Crunch. Aha! Got you this time, you slippery fella! Ah, oh, shucks. Just another boot. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Humdrum. <laughs> oh my! If it isn't little Jenny LeClue. What a glorious day, don't you think? As far as Jenny was concerned, small talk was like a second pair of underpants. Uncomfortable and completely unnecessary. But Mom always says, create a good rapport and they'll reveal everything to you. So she gave it a shot. How's the fishing? Oh, the fishing's great. But the catching is bad. All I'm getting are old boots and strange bits of metal. But just look out there, Jenny. She's got that wonderful afternoon glow. No one knew why the lake glowed at night, and few were brave enough to swim its murky waters. What lay beneath its depths was the stuff of myth and legend. Somewhere out there lies the giant red herring, or so they say. But no one's ever caught one. Sounds fishy to me. Well, if she's out there, I'll catch her. Someday. Great. Well, now that we have a good rapport, where can I find Mrs. Humdrum? <laughs> well, she's down there on the ridge. Oh, if you're headed down there, there's a knack to getting the ladder to work. First you shake it, then you kick it, and then you push it. Sounds unnecessarily complicated. I'll join you down there in a bit. Just have to sort my tackle out. That's adult speak for I'm uh, kind of bunched up down there. Shake and trim, bow. if there are any speed runs for this game already and how long they take mrs humdrum i presume oh hello uh, you i'm the private detective you contacted
The code word is Purple Panda. I'm here to solve your case. Who is it, Dan? It's Jenny, dear, the LeClue girl. She doesn't see so well without her glasses. Oh, hello, Jenny. I'm afraid I don't see so well without my glasses. Nothing wrong with her hearing, though. What did she say? <laughs> I said there's nothing wrong with your hearing, dear. Oh, no, thank you. I've already eaten. I believe you have a case <laughs> for me? We do. We, we do. Great. So what's the trouble? Haunted by the ghost of a former lover? Worried you're being poisoned by a mad uncle? Something so dark and gruesome I can't even begin to imagine the horror? Well, I've lost my reading glasses. Oh. And there it was. A real case. A confounding mystery to challenge Jenny's brilliant mind. <sighs> I thought this was finally going to be a good one. What do you think, Jenny? Can you help? Sure, Mr. Humdrum. I'm gonna need to ask you a few questions. Sure, Mr. Fittingly named Humdrum. Looks freshly blow-dried. A professional job. Your hair looks lovely today, Mrs. Humdrum. Is that a new style? Thank you! I had it done yesterday. Dan didn't notice. <laughs> they call it the Queen's Quaff. Well, it's certainly big. And expensive. But I'm worth it, Dan. <laughs> Who could put a price sure on that you beautiful are. head of hair? You're not so bad yourself, hot stuff. Gross. I've never been interrogated before. This is such fun. Oh, I'm gonna go out and kill someone right now. As soon as I find my glasses. Jenny had often snuck through the hole in the fence at Grubman's to watch the races. She could understand why the dogs ran so hard. They were chasing the promise of food. What the adults were chasing was less relatable. I notice you're a gambler, Mrs. Humdrum. You've been to the Greyhound races. That was yesterday. We always go to Grubman's on Wednesday. Interesting. You really are very good. The best. How long have you been solving mysteries? But I'll ask the questions, thank you. This is a soft reboot. I've just started. Do you often carry a pair of binoculars? She doesn't go anywhere without them. I presume you don't wear your glasses when you use the binoculars. No, I can't get my eyes close enough to the eye cups. Hmm, I see. Did you take your binoculars with you to the races? Of course. Those critters are so tiny, I can't keep up without my binoculars. Interesting. I forget whole parts What's of my this? script. Fingerprints? Who? Polygraph test? It's like you're reading my mind. I expect you're finding it difficult to paint without your glasses. Oh no, I never wear them when I paint. I like to feel the canvas, to interpret the colors. She's an incredible painter. You should have her paint you. Thanks, but I don't mix business with pleasure. Have you figured it out yet? The suspense is killing me. Feet and legs, far too small. Hey. Terrifying. Are you sure, game? There it is. That's a large hole. She must have caught it on something. Did you have trouble climbing down the ladder, Mrs. Humdrum? Why, yes, I did. 
How on earth did you know? There's a tear in your pants pocket. Well, what do you know? I didn't realize these pants even had pockets. I feel like you know more about me than I do. With how many jokes have been made about women's clothes having no pockets, somebody sh by now should be making bank by just putting pockets on goddamn pants. This rock is suspicious. And this bird is pissing me off. Oh yeah, the eyes. Jenny recognized the distinctive indentations left behind by a pair of spectacles. She must have been wearing them recently. You still have marks from your glasses on the bridge of your nose. You probably lost them within the last day or two. Oh, I never would have thought of that. When do you last remember wearing them? I'm really not sure. Dan? You had them at your Tuesday book club. Oh, yes. We're reading Fifty Shady Graves. You are so thorough. Any more questions? I think I have everything I need to wrap this one up. Where are Gail's glasses? Yeah, these two probably have nothing to do with it. I think she lost it before she went painting. Gail was at the races last night. She had to remove her glasses to use the binoculars. Gail also had her hair cut recently. It's fluffy and big and could easily hide a small object. I could be eating cupcakes. Solving a complex mystery like the case of the missing glasses was tough work. But now came the most satisfying part. Delivering the dramatic denouement. She's a detective. Let's review the facts. One, not only do you love your binoculars, you've come to depend on them for bird watching, greyhound watching, basically anything far away watching. That's true. I immediately sensed the two optical devices, your binoculars and glasses, were incompatible. Thus, to use one, you had to remove the other. Fascinating! Fact two. Yesterday, you changed your hairstyle. I did! Though fun, it was also impractical. And so tall that it could easily conceal a small object. I see where this is going. Please, don't interrupt. After much research, deliberation, and debate, I've concluded there is only one place the missing glasses could be. They've been on your head the whole time. Oh, so they are. <laughs> right there on top of my head. Incredible. What a talent. They're always in the last place you look, aren't they? A master detective in the making. What would we have done without you? <clears throat> Gail, don't forget to pay the girl. Oh, of course, silly me. You must be rewarded generously for all your hard work. Plop. Now don't spend it all in one place. Thanks. I'll do my best. With currency, that might be hard to promise. <laughs> the dramatic music when you go down. I 
Are you ready, Keith? Wow, what an amazing detective. Glasses on her head. Hmm, who could have guessed? Oh, you heard. Whatever would we do without Master Investigator Jenny LeClue? I thought it was pretty cool, Jenny. And a whole nickel! You must be so excited. Yeah, that's more than her mom makes in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's all just... Hey, Jenny, my grandma called. She wants her sweater back. <laughs> oh, how wonderful it was to joke around with friends. I've had enough of this. Oh, yes. Let's be mean. You're really mean. Skirt ironed but unevenly. The work of a distracted housewife. Brand new, hideously overpriced shoes. Overcompensating father. Your dad's sleeping with Deborah's mom again, isn't he? What? No! How do you... Shut up, Jenny! You don't know anything! Wow, Jenny. That was cruel. <laughs> Who even says something like that? Aw, don't cry, Veronica. She's just a weirdo nobody! Jenny Lehu. And... and the case of the missing... friends! <laughs> uh, yeah. Good one, Veronica. Come on, let's get you home. Are you coming, Susie? Let me look at her options. Thanks for the coffee, Keith. And the extra sugar. Of course. It's... Nothing special at all, and the same thing he does for everyone? Oh, okay. See you around, Keith. Well, that went well. Shall we? Uh, yeah. I've got no customers now anyway. I'm just glad you like me, Jenny. Nothing exciting ever happens here. I'm so tired of these simple cases. Jeez. How am I supposed to become a real detective if there are no real crimes to solve? You up that old lady? <clears throat> Darn. Thanks, Keith. But it was stupid, and everyone knew it, including your girlfriend. She's not my. And you really mustn't let them treat you like that. You should stick up for yourself. Uh huh. They don't mean <clears throat> anything. Sometimes you just gotta speak up and say how you feel. Well, I. You can't just let people walk all over you, Keith. Okay. I'm frustrated. Let it all out. Ugh. Ugh. It doesn't matter anyway. Nothing's gonna change. Not in this ghost town. <clears throat> it's not so bad. Don't you ever wonder what it would be like to live somewhere else? Oh, um, not really. Who am I kidding? There is nowhere else. Not for miles. She's gone down the deep end. <clears throat> oh, it sucks. I see practice <laughs> is going well. Is your dad still pressuring you to play? Well... Come on, Keith. You hate basketball. And tough love? But you're the worst player on the team. Uh, not the worst. Well, on the bench, anyway. Why don't you just tell him you don't want to play anymore? It's... a strawberry tradition. That's my point, Keith. This whole town is dead, stuck in the past. Everyone is just doing what they're told without questioning why. Where's the ambition, the sense of adventure? Are we still talking about basketball? Everything is basketball. <clears throat> How's your mom? <clears throat> she seems... Distracted. Normally, she's so focused on her job. I mean, it's understandable. It's been almost a year since. And now she's planning to go away for the weekend, and she still won't tell me why. Yeah? She was definitely acting weird earlier. Maybe she's lonely? 
You know what? You're right. I am? She shouldn't be alone right now. Actually, your dad told me they were meeting in the library. We're going to need supplies. Two of Mr. Bean's finest, please. To go, of course. Here is my payment in full. That's a nickel. Put the rest on my tab? <laughs> Thanks for the pep talk, Keith. You always know what to say to make me feel better. Last stone. You want it? Everything is mine. Thanks. <clears throat> Woohoo! Bullseye! You've dug too deep, Jenny. The dragon was stirred. Listener. Or maybe he just didn't speak much. Either way, Jenny really enjoyed their little talks. He was the only person who really seemed to understand her. Jenny biked briskly towards the library back on campus to surprise her mother. Nothing exciting ever happens here, she grumbled, unaware of the great adventure that lay in store just around the corner. I like when the author shuts up at times when it needs to be quiet. Unlike me. Gerald Strasbury. Cornelius Strasbury. Cornelius! Strasburys. The Strasbury lineage stretched back to the very founding of the university. There had been a Dean Strasbury at Gumboldt for over 150 years. Les was the first with longer. a face. The Dean's retiring, and the only Strasbury left is Keith. And he's not exactly the academic type. Keith is colossally fucking stupid. No one on duty. A book thief's paradise. There's a note on the desk. <laughs> Look at that line. Maybe wearing a hat. Mostly because we saw him confess that he was going to wear a hat. Stop standing on the, on the mad there. That was weird. Hello? Mom? Mr. Strasbury? Anybody? Jenny's words echoed through the library. Something's not right here. A mystery was unfolding. Whatever it is, I'll get to the bottom of it. Les Strasbury, Gumbold's 21st and jolliest dean, smiled down at Jenny. From Looking on a bit high. wonky today, Mr. Strasbury. A pair of wires ran down the wall and disappeared behind the painting. It's too high to reach. What are you hiding back there? The chandeliers that adorn this library are made from rare Arthurian quartz, kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. The Glatz family was one of the oldest in town. They were the first to mine the valuable quartz deposits beneath Arthurton. And as such, they became incomparably wealthy. And they sure like to let everyone know it. Laddertron 5000. The pinnacle of remote ladder and bookcase technology. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Whoa! Dangerous! The newly installed ladder system was prone to malfunction. 
Should have kept the old wooden ladders. They never tried to electrocute me. I need to find a way to turn the power off. Jenny gazed at the technological marvel of Laddertron 5000. Seems pointless. It's not hard to move a ladder. Sometimes it feels like some unknown force is just trying to slow me down. The author cackled deep into the night. No good. I don't think I'll be able to move the ladders while the electricity is on. Jenny. Jenny was notorious for climbing book carts. It's the only way to reach the highest shelves. In fact, this could be useful. But something else had caught her eye. This table's a complete mess. Who would leave it like this? I wonder. Legible scribbles, intricate diagrams of giant machines, a worn copy of Aliens in Arthurton. Jenny knew only one person could have been sitting here. Susie. CJ. Oh. It's odd, though. He usually hides everything when he's finished. What's this? A tattered piece of paper with a series of seemingly unrelated notes. on corpses. UFOs, shadow men, experiments on corpses. It seemed that CJ was unraveling a mystery of his own. Wait, there's something on the other side. Wow, a color map of Arthurton. Jenny had never seen a town map with this level of detail before. I can't believe CJ left this behind. That's so unlike him. He'd be terrified if anyone else found it. I'll keep it safe until I see him again. And then I'll continue to keep it. Because it's going in the book. <laughs> Look at that cat. That's a good cat. Hmm. Which one is the real mastermind? So Voidburger streamed this game. That's why... It's how I found out about it. Right from her first stream, I knew I wanted to stream it, but she got all the way through the game, and she was never able to get anything other than CEO. So I think the trick is to be either completely nice or a complete asshole. I decorate that. <laughs> you know, that's probably not gonna actually help. Excuse me, Les. I like this. She puts pretty much everything into her journal. The island on the lake does look like an alien. I think it's supposed to be a, a skull. Yeah, it does look kind of little green man-ish.
Shh, don't tell anyone. Press the direction button and, and and then enter. No secrets between friends, Mr. Strasbury. Jenny stood on her tiptoes and delicately removed the priceless painting from the wall. Punch. Oops. <laughs> Aha! Precisely what I was hoping to find. It was? <laughs> Let's see. Lights, bookcases, ladders. I'll cut the power and continue my investigation. But Jenny knew better than to play with electricity, so she left it alone. Do it with my it's mouth. It's a simple switch. Perfectly safe. The eerie silence unnerved our tiny hero. But even worse was the dark. Jenny had always been terrified of the dark. Just breathe. A great detective never succumbs to fear. <sighs> Looks like that did the trick. Plop. Mm, Jenny stopped in her tracks. The sign clearly read, wet floor, caution. Her path was blocked. You're kidding me, right? Trampling muddy feet over a perfectly clean floor? She was a maverick, not a monster. <laughs> Gotta move the ladders over to where there's an actual hole. Like that. I grab it from here, yes I can. I thought maybe I could push it over here and there would be a place I could crawl down and there might be a sticker down there. Splat, splat, splat. Rare books. Our most precious collections reside in this temperature-controlled room. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Yeah, yeah, we know. on that shelf, but I can't reach it. The fallen remains of a bookcase blocked Jenny's path. It looks like a bomb went off in here. It's too precarious to climb over. You could probably go around it, that large gap right in front of you, next to the rail. If we're gonna be like that. I'll just pick it. Jenny was skilled with a lockpick, having watched her mother demonstrate the process countless times. But that was just for fun at home. This was the real world. You couldn't just go around picking other people's locks. That was a crime. A great detective knows when to bend the rules. And the paperclip she has in her pocket. And the gun she has in the closet. 
Mom always says, lockpicking is a subtle art. Move slowly and search for the sweet spot. Right there. Gotta look for it to twitch on its own. Piano fell on her. It must have been a rush of blood that caused Jenny to act so irrationally. Regardless, she had picked the lock and felt strangely exhilarated. What treasures lay behind the door? She was off to burgle the entire town. Oh, it's empty. Still, let book car could be useful. Useful for one thing. <laughs> Splat. We Whoa! An empty library, a fallen bookcase, and now a broken balcony? This mystery has all the hallmarks of foul play. They say words can't hurt you. In this case, I'd be inclined to disagree. Lots of paper can. Solid iron and oak, torn apart like a piece of bread. It would have taken some serious force to do this. Something bad happened here. This is feeling more and more like a crime scene. And then Jenny saw it. And then Jen, there he is. Covered in a ripped curtain and surrounded by broken glass. It is a crime scene. She couldn't be happier. Something's blocking the ladder. There's something stuck in the track. Ipsa, scientia, potestas, est. It's the Dean's ring. No wonder the ladders were malfunctioning. The ring must have caused a short circuit. It's so flat. I'll keep hold of this and return it to the Dean when I see him next. Oh no, it's too high up. That hole looks a little hard to see. But only a little. <laughs> Yay! Yay again! Never forget the first time you see a dead body. It harrows the mind, terrifies the soul, scars you to your very core. Luckily, a I'm a serial body? killer. No way. This is amazing! Who lay under that curtain? Who had breathed their last breath? Who had shuffled off this mortal coil to meet their maker? Susie! Anyone? I mean, it could be an escaped lunatic from the asylum. Or an axe-wielding maniac on the run from the cops. It 
could be... It could be... Mom? Oh no, please no. No, you never forget the first time you see a dead body. Jenny knew it was wrong to disturb the crime scene. But I have to know who's under here. Slowly, she drew back the heavy cloth. Please don't be my mom. Please don't be my mom. Dean Strausberry! Thank God. <laughs> uh, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Poor Mr. Strausberry. What happened to you? Was this a terrible accident? Or worse. Murder? Her stomach churned. Seeing the Dean's lifeless face, his contorted frame, Jenny felt the urge to run, to get as far away from this horrific sight as possible. I just... Jenny had longed for an adventure, for a real case to solve. I... didn't expect it to be like this. She gathered herself, took a deep breath, and began to search for clues. Powder sugar. The bastard. The hawk and the weasel and other bedtime stories. It could be important. Then again, it could have just joined the Dean for the ride. There are bits of glass and metal debris everywhere. He has burn marks on his hand. He looks like he's been dead for weeks. His skin is pale and colorless. And there's a strange mark on his neck. Just on his neck, Jenny. You're not wrong, but... Come on. The Dean's hand was clapped shut around a small object. That's strange. Rigor mortis usually takes hours to set in. I'm sorry for what I'm about to do, Mr. Strasbury, but this could be a vital clue. Chops off his hand. Mom's ID card? But that means... Julie LeClue had definitely been here. She could be the last person to have seen him alive. She could be the killer. Impossible. My mother's a forensic expert. She'd never leave such incriminating evidence behind. <laughs> but even the smartest criminals made mistakes. Jenny couldn't deny this looked bad for her mom. If anyone else sees this, they'll jump to conclusions. They'll think my mom's a murderer. Unless... A peculiar thought crossed Jenny's mind. Unless... There's nothing to find. Removing evidence from a crime scene was highly unethical. So was planting evidence to frame an innocent person. She had no proof of that. I have to do something. Everything is mine. My mom would kill me if she knew I was tampering with evidence. But I have to protect her. If I'm the world's greatest detective, that means I'm infallible. It's smashed. Most likely from the fall. The hand stopped at 3.57 p.m. That gives me a potential time of death. If Jenny had arrived just a few minutes earlier... I might have been able to save him. A book about chance. What are the odds this was an accident? Taylor heads. Fuck off. book about predicting the future. I suppose it didn't belong to Mr. Strasbury then. It's also the developer's chance for a, a few extra jokes. A 
How far out does this go? Uh huh. The Dean's planner lay open on today's date. Perhaps I can retrace his steps and create a timeline of events. Looks like he completed all his chores for the day. I already knew the Dean was meeting Mom here. So where is she now? Meet JL. Could that be Mom? Where's Widow's Drop? I've never heard of it. Looks like he cancelled his meetings on Friday and rearranged lunch with Keith. Oh, poor Keith. Jenny didn't know how she would break the news to him. But I should be the one to tell him. Gossip spreads like wildfire in Arthurton. He sure was working hard on that speech. I'm sad he won't get to deliver it. I think that's all the evidence I'm going to find here. She took one last look at the Dean's lifeless body. I'm she sorry, poked Mr. the belly. Strasbury. I promise I'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Jenny knew she should leave and call the police. But how often did a case like this come along? Never. There's more to this than meets the eye. The den, if you will. Some of this evidence must be connected. So she opened her journal to join the dots. What was the apparent cause of death? All signs point to electrocution and falling to his death. From reading. Bang. It looks like the Dean was thrown from the balcony when he reached down to pick up his ring, which was stuck in the electrified ladder track. He grabbed the curtain, but it didn't slow him down. He landed on a bed of metal and glass debris. What is unusual about the Dean's death? mark on his neck. All the skin around his face is gray and gaunt. I've never seen anything like it before. He's holding my mom's ID card, which makes her the prime suspect. But why would she or anyone want to kill Dean Strasbury? Jenny suspected foul play, but what was the motive? Had she missed something? The watch! The Dean's watch stopped at 3.57 p.m. When I came into the library, the clock tower rang four times. The library only has one exit. And I haven't seen anyone but the Dean since I got here. Which meant if the Dean was murdered... The killer must still be here! <laughs> well, not anymore. He's getting away! I'll get you. That's a powerful arms there, Jenny. Jenny could hear police sirens in the distance. Someone must have tipped them off. I'll catch the murderer and keep him busy until the cops arrive. Chasing after murderers was hardly the job of a little girl. Hey, you! Stop! Despite surviving her fall without so much as a broken bone, Jenny couldn't help but feel she had failed. As the sirens grew louder, she knew it would only be a matter of time before the sheriff arrived. 
and then she'd have to explain why she hadn't called for help. But the worst feeling of all was that she had let the killer escape. As she drifted slowly into unconsciousness, Jenny heard a familiar voice. Concerned, gentle, soothing. You killed Jenny. me, Jenny! Oh, Jenny, what have you done? Mom? Freeze! You're under arrest! What have I done? <laughs> I killed Rufus. I killed him. My diet, I killed it. This is all wrong. Murder in Arthurton? This is not an appropriate story for Jenny LeClue. Poor Dean Strousberry. What was I thinking? I've gone too far. Interesting way of eating Perhaps there. I should take a break. Come on, Rufus. Let's go for a walk. In Clear the storm. our heads and work off some of this jam. The way Rufus bends. Letter to Finkel fans. <laughs> 